dark save for light being cast from the big tv screen and the imminent sunrise that's teasing the one starry sky with whispers of morning george how are you pretty good how about yourself i'm uh i'm good i'm i got to i got to live a whole part of my childhood over again playing this game yeah yeah i feel like from our conversation last time and um, you know, like on, on the last episode, that this is going to be much more of a heartbreaking experience for you than for me. Because, <laughs> like, I was like, oh, I don't know, man. I think this is going to be pretty awful. And you're like, ah, oh, no, nah, it'll be fine. And, and and I don't know about your experience, but mine was at or near expectations. Mine was also at or near expectations. We just had really, really different expectations. <laughs> so, so what did we play this time? We played Sonic 2 for the Sega Genesis, or if we have any international folks, the uh, Mega Drive. Yeah, you didn't even know that, did you? Nope, nope did not know that was a thing <laughs> at all. Like, yeah. Hmm. yeah, I don't know what it is about other english speaking countries but when something is sent overseas and in this case i specifically mean europe uh they usually like just screw and they still do this right this wasn't just an artifact of the old days like they still are like oh instead of you know the sega genesis we'll call it the sega mega drive and in some cases there's a good reason but i don't think they have like a negative connotation with the word genesis but anyway um so well, no, uh, i mean it, it, it's, it's probably just the metric system you know it's like like a royale with cheese you know like like they got the metric system they don't know what a genesis is <laughs> it, it's totally possible uh originally released uh november 24th 1992 uh six million copies sold which is you know i mean it's not nothing but it's not like Super Mario World numbers. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's six million, so that would mean like that's one for every thousand people on the face of the planet. Is that about right? Is that how you measure things? Uh, <laughs> like, that's your yardstick <laughs> for success. Yeah, no, I mean, especially when you get into numbers that high, because when people are like, you're like, oh man, I I love my wife. She's one in a million. Like, there's seven thousand other people like her in the world. That's pretty insulting, dude. You know, like, or. I mean, if you don't want to be so damn negative about it, you could be like, <laughs> only 7,000. That's, that's incredible. So if she dies, you only have 6,999 nearly identical copies to replace them with. Yeah, yeah. No, it's like surrogates. You know, you're like, all right, roll, roll out the next one, you know? <laughs> yeah. I'd like to believe that each one is like slightly different, though. Like they're bespoke nearly identical copies. So they're not made <laughs> through like a mass factory process but there's like really talented artisans creating clones of us all over because there's only like you know a million people in the world so then they just make copies of them yeah no i i like that idea and especially like the idea of being able to conglomerate them all in one place because then i feel that you would be a lot more flippant with what would cause you to murder your spouse you know because like you're like well this iteration has something really slightly wrong with the eyes i don't like it i'm gonna send it back you know and it's like well that's not they're they're People, yeah, they're people. Right? And, that, that is, <laughs> this got incredibly heavy, incredibly fast. Yeah, right? So Sonic. <laughs> so Sonic. Sonic 2 specifically. So I was thinking about this, and um, I had Sonic 1, and I had Sonic 2, and I had friends who had Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles, so I had access to the whole suite of, of Genesis games, but... I don't know, man. Something about Sonic 2. Like, that was the one I always went back to. Like, if I was going to sit down and play Sonic for, you know, 20 minutes or something before school started or or before dinner or whatever, like, I didn't go for the others. I always reached for Sonic 2. And I'm kind of getting the feeling that that was not your go-to thing. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, um, you know, I, I played Sonic like crazy because I actually... Um, being, being a, a, you know, like having my, my mom and, and dad who were divorced, right. I actually had an SNES at my mom's house and a Genesis at my dad's. So, mm. you know, like I actually, actually did have access to all of the, uh, all the, the system, all of the games and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, it just, um, it was not, it, it was not my go-to. I think Mario world was generally like my go-to time killer kind of a thing. But uh, yeah, no, I mean, like I, I definitely, but I do remember playing it a lot and really enjoying it. You know, like there was no point where I was like, you know, 
like, oh man, this game's terrible. Any more so than I was with like any <laughs> other game, you know? Like as you embed like, the controller in the drywall in frustration. <laughs> yeah, we were like, oh, this game totally cheated because you know, like, and you 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 kind of like personify the game a little bit, you know, and, and, and you're just kind of like the game doesn't like me, you know, and you're like. Well, this game is racist. <laughs> yeah, all, all that that racism against us white males, man. Like it's yes. just it's, it's tragic. Um, <laughs> so I was in 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 fairness to games of that generation, though I will say that I noticed a lot more glitches in this than I remember, and they're not typically game breaking, but they're usually either hilarious or terrifying. Um, for example, uh, Sonic, if you collect all the Chaos Emeralds, all seven of them, can turn into Super Sonic. And Tails does not get your buffs when you turn into Super Sonic. <laughs> so you're constantly leaving him to the point where the computer takes over and, and like magically makes him catch up to you. But you're able to then accelerate so fast that you can like break the universe while he's trying to <laughs> magically catch back up to you. So there were a few times where he like was caught in this like running loop where he was like floating just a little bit above the ground, like strolling in place or oh, like, nice. or stuck yeah. in his like ball form with the tail straight up. So like, <laughs> Oh, he was falling the last time he tried to get up, catch up to me. And now this is just his life. <laughs> <laughs> it's like horrible, horrible purgative environments, you know, but yeah, I do think it speaks to um, to Tails as like a character because, you know, Sonic has to harness the power of I'm I'm guessing like ancient magics or whatever the Chaos Emeralds like are. I mean, you know, they, they have Chaos right in the name, so I'm gonna yeah. assume Elder Gods. Yeah, yeah, like like yeah, we're talking like some like old school Cthulhu stuff, right? So he has to, so Sonic has to harness Cthulhu magic in order to move that fast, and Tails somehow, while still encapsulated in his ball, is able to like. <laughs> Like keep pace with him, you know, and 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 but the thing is that like tails isn't always that fast, right? So it really makes you think that like the only thing holding tails back is his belief that he should be slower than Sonic, you know? Well, I mean, he just idolizes the guy. Yeah. It's, I mean, you know, he's got cool shoes and like an, yeah. an edgy '90s attitude. <laughs> oh, dude, the the, the the edginess of his attitude, man. Like, <laughs> like, like, like. I remember one point, like, I put the controller down and I went to like go get some food, and like, it came back, and Sonic's like giving me the business. And I'm like, I am, I am one controller button away from ending your life, man. Like, you know, yeah. like, no, he was just like, <laughs> just staring daggers at me, like, like, you want to um, do something, bro? Like, you're wasting my time. Yeah. And I'm like, and, oh, oh. And this, this is something I noticed is, is. I, I can't think of anything in when we played through Super Mario World that I looked at it and I was like, oh, that was a distinctly 90s American thing to do. But Sonic, which I mean, is still a Japanese game from a Japanese game company, was very much uh, written to appeal to like a 90s edgy, like preteen and teen kind of aesthetic. Three seconds is how long you have to not touch the controls before he like starts checking his not watch because he doesn't have a watch. <laughs> <laughs> and then and he's kind of like gesturing. And then uh, about 14 to 15 seconds later is when he lays down and just angrily stares at the camera <laughs> until you touch <laughs> the controls, which made me remember and I actually looked this up on YouTube to confirm uh, in Sonic CD, which was from, you know, the failed Sega CD expansion thing, um, at like two and a half minutes, he would actually like throw his arms up in disgust and jump out of the universe <laughs> and kill you. Like it actually cost you a life. So, so he would literally become so fed up with your nonsense that he would end his own life. Yes. Yes. That the is... thought of waiting on you for two minutes and 31 seconds was <laughs> was literally a fate worse than death so he chose the sweet release of death i want i i, I mean obviously i don't actually want this but i think it would be amazing <laughs> to see like in an office setting like a human that was like that you know we're like yeah, you know, like somebody like walks into your office and you're like, hey, give me one one second real fast. Let me just finish up this email. And then like after three seconds, you know, like they immediately like start like 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 looking at their watch and being like, come on, man. And you're like, OK, well, that this is like rude, but whatever. And then like like after like two minutes, you know, they just go like, 
whatever. And then they just like, like throw themselves into the, the like the floor, you know, and you're like, I can't this uh, un- unprofessional, you know, just yeah, unprofessional. Sonic. As long as they didn't actually kill themselves, I think it'd be funny to see them <laughs> reduced to like a, a, like a groveling pile. Like I can't wait anymore. <laughs> I just, I just need you to sign these memos. <laughs> so let's talk about the visuals first. So what, what did you think about them? Them graphics? Them sweet sixteen uh, bit graphics. Oh man, they were they were beautiful. No, actually, I thought the visuals held up pretty well. I thought that they were on par with uh with with Mario World. I thought that they were a little bit grittier. I think like there was like more like shading, you know. Um, but I think that was more in keeping with the tone of the game, you know. Like, Everything's definitely darker too. Like still yeah. bright and colorful, but less crayola crayon colorful yeah let's like here are our primary colors now <laughs> now all the primary you know like, <laughs> that's, like, that's all you get those colors yes yeah. you get you get those three and just deal with that yeah yeah exactly no i i would agree with that i think that um some of the i thought some of the visuals were interesting because like it so one of the main differences between sonic and super mario world is the gotta go fast right so like the whole thing is like you gotta go fast right so i thought that sometimes i was a little bit like visually overwhelmed just because there were so many things (laughs) flying past me so quickly you know so i was just kind of like especially in the um i think it's the the second stage the one that's like the chemical 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 plant yeah, yeah, the chemical plant one where I was just kind of like, oh my god, oh, oh, whoa, oh, 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 you know, like where it just like <laughs> so much was happening. I was just kind of like on like visual overload, and I, I did feel that that sometimes detracted from the gameplay because it was so confusing that I wasn't really sure exactly like what I needed to be paying attention to, so I didn't like die, you know. And so I don't think you can really separate the visuals in this from the controls and the mechanics because the. I feel like the the first level, the Emerald Hill Zone, is all about teaching you, you know, yes, this is a platformer, but there are certain things that will be dependent on how fast you're moving. Because there's like the spirally thing mm-hmm. where like mm-hmm. you, you, you know, you kind of like do it. It's like a corkscrew, I guess. Um, not the loop, but the, the corkscrew thing. And right. if you don't go through that at a high enough speed, you just fall down sometimes to your death, but you just, you know, to whatever's <laughs> below it. And so it's kind of the game's way of saying like, hey, being timid and and cautiously approaching things is like not really what you're doing here. Yeah. <laughs> and then in uh, Chemical Plant, um, there's several times in that those two acts where you can easily outrun the camera. And it's only mm. for like a second or two. But if you like hit, you know, the little accelerator thing and then you like flip around the loop and like you can easily outrun the camera and then you usually crash into something that brings you to a grinding halt. Yes. That and, would have and liquefied your hedgehoggy body. <laughs> yes. And into <laughs> just a puddle of blue. <laughs> um, but I feel like what that level is teaching you is sometimes you're going to be moving so fast that pretty much just don't touch the controls because, yeah. and, and it's like a weird thing to teach the player. Like, Sometimes the level design is sort of on rails and maybe just don't do anything. Yeah. And and I would definitely agree with that. I think that there were a number of times and we can touch about this more a little bit later with game design, but where I said like the, the, the visual cues were not as sharp as they were in Mario world. And of course, unfortunately we're going to, predominantly compare this to the last platformer we played which true is, you know is it is it fair to compare a game to super mario world nope, nope. <laughs> but you know like here we go but is it like there was a lot a lot of places where like the visuals didn't they, they weren't stark or stunning enough for me to know like hey this is something that should draw my attention and i should become immediately aware of you know yeah. um so there were like a couple of times and, and actually i pointed it out to megan while i was playing and I just said, you see, Mario wouldn't have done this, you know, was, <laughs> was I, I was going fast as you're wont to do with a Sonic game. Right. And it was in the uh, Emerald Hill, the, the first, the first, first one, level. Emerald Hill. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm like going fast and I go over a bridge and I just get slammed into by one of those piranhas. Right. <laughs> and and there was just nothing to 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 key me up or to warn me that that's something I should be aware of other than just the act of getting hit. You know, so like there was nothing to say, like, like, you know, like, like 
you know, something colorful that like that would like draw your eye or anything like that. It was just like more level. And then like the thing popped up and got me. And I was like, you see, I feel like Mario would like have some kind of a visual cue to like let you know, like, hey, this is going to be like a thing that you should like cue into, you know? Yeah. And OK, so I, I remind me because I have a thing about gameplay and mechanics. But <laughs> OK, the, the one other thing with the visuals that I found particularly striking uh, because if I recall correctly, and I could look this up, but I can't be bothered. If I recall, cor- <laughs> if I recall correctly, uh, the Genesis was actually slightly more powerful hardware than the Super Nintendo. And one of the places I feel like that shows is in, uh, like, from basically the second, the very first act of of Emerald Hill Zone starts. Like everything is friggin' moving all the time. Like yeah. there's yeah. <laughs> friggin' flowers that spin. There's like uh, one of the later levels has a constant stream of clouds moving at like a thousand miles an hour in the background. <laughs> there's you know lava glowing and there's just crap. Mo- like when I got to um uh the the casino nights or whatever it is. Yes. Like I I just I was like how was I not constantly having seizures as like a 12 year old yeah. pl- playing through like just the, everything's blinking and spinning and spinning and blinking in the background. And then there's other crap blinking and spinning in the foreground and then Sonic's moving and there's enemies. And like when you first start the stage, the rings thing is flashing at you because you have zero rings. I was just like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> just everybody calm down. Yeah. I, I definitely think that, that this was a great litmus test for whether or not you, you know, had uh epilepsy as a kid you know like yeah. like you you, you you if you got through the, if you were if you, you could walk up to someone and you're like oh hey did you ever beat sonic versus sonic and tails and they said yes it's like well then you don't have epilepsy you yeah. know like yes. but you must be fine good yeah, on you especially the uh yeah the the casino one i just remember kind of like being like hmm this is like if somebody you know like it's like like the visuals are very you know like they're very stimulating you know but this is very much so like when somebody's like man this this creme brulee needs a little bit more like five gallons of sugar you know like i'm gonna, I'm gonna like, put i'm gonna put a pie on top of it <laughs> <laughs> exactly yes hmm creme pie brulee you know like it's yeah it's so so are they good? Yes. I, and, and I definitely think that they, they hold up. They are what I was like expecting. Um, but I would say that, uh, that, that they, the pendulum was starting to swing in the direction of too much. Like if they kept going in that direction, like I'd be like, it'd be like, you know, some of those Japanese game shows where it's like super happy, fun, awesome time. And it's like, you know, (laughs) just like a bit much. Yeah. Some of those actually do cause seizures in (laughs) epileptic people. Um, I will say the Casino Zone, with its its fast-moving nonsense, does have one of the funniest glitches because uh, it's another level where it's very, very easy to outrun the camera, especially if you uh, you build up momentum by, like, bouncing off of the, like, the, like, it's kind of like slot machine. Um, and then you hit, I don't know why, but there's, like, three or four places in the levels that are, uh, like, a small embankment at, like, a, 20 degree grade going down and if you hit that and you are spinning which of course you are spinning because you were just up in the big crazy machine thing then all of your momentum immediately gets arrested but you don't actually stop moving and then all of the sudden you shoot forward like three feet and then you stop and then you like (laughs) shoot forward like three feet and then you stop and it's just it's so visually jarring for like you're flying around and then you come to this grinding halt, but like the level is still pulsing around you and everything's like glowing and flashing. And then you like, eh, and like limp forward a little bit. And because you're like trapped in the role, you can't get out of that nonsense until there's something (laughs) to put your feet on again. Like it's just, it's really bizarre. And and it, it happens to be in the most like visually jarring stage in the entire game. Oh yeah. No, actually one, a similar thing that, um, happened when i was playing was i think it's in like the le- the zone after um the uh the the whatever the casino one and uh where basically like they have like two springs in like a small pit like facing each other oh, so you, it, you get stuck yeah, yeah. And it was just like bam, 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 bam. And i was just kind of <laughs> like oh, oh oh god oh god what's happening like like make it stop so i jumped and i jumped out and i jumped in the wrong direction you know because like Either you have to be like expert timing or it's just you just keep rolling the dice until you get it right, you know? <laughs> and so like I jumped out and like I remember like walking up to it and being like, I just I can't I don't want to do this again, you know? Like, don't, 
don't do this to me game. And I was like, no, I'll jump over it. I'll, I'll totally jump over it. And then I didn't, I got stuck in it again. And I was like, Oh, <laughs> I asked you not to do this to me. <laughs> I just I wanted one thing, which is to not like get motion sick, but like, but yeah, like I said, overall though, I, I think that they definitely, they hold up. And I mean, like considering some games I've seen from back in the, in the day, um, where the visuals are so confusing that you don't even know what you're supposed to be doing. I, I at no point felt lost, you know? Yeah. The, so. it, it, this is a small thing, but I can't think of any place in the game where anything is Sonic blue or tails orange. Mm. There are mm-hmm. things that are blue and there are things that are orange, but generally speaking, you can look at the screen and pick out where Sonic is. And even if you can't see him, he has bright white eyes in the middle of his face and, mm-hmm. and bright red shoes. So like there's distinguishing characteristics, which, you know, in a game where you got to go fast, it's nice to be able to know where your avatar is. Absolutely. And, and, and as we said, you know, if you lose him for more than three seconds, all you have to do is for the thing looking at you directly and get, becoming <laughs> increasingly impatient. So angry. So what about the music? Uh, the music, I thought, um, I don't think it was like as iconic as Mario, obviously. But, um, uh, but, you know, I thought that the music was very, very good. I enjoyed it. I will tell you the one music cue or sound cue that we can't talk about Sonic and not talk about. <laughs> Is when I started to drown, I had a near panic attack because yeah. because that that's deeply ingrained, you know. Oh, yes. Like no, I was that like, that came. Not only did that come rushing back, but when I was in an area where I had to get out, and I knew I was like, I've been underwater just long enough that this is about to start. <laughs> Brace yourself. And then when it started, like I felt my heart speed up, and I was like, I even knew it was coming. <laughs> like, I'm an adult. So um, Megan was uh, like reading behind me, which means that, you know, like she would occasionally like look up and see it. And so like, yeah, I was in I think it was in the um, the industrial zone. Um, I'm never going to remember the name of that. Nope. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, the, 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 you know, the super fun site. So anyways, I was at the super fun site. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, and, and yeah. And so like, I remember being underwater and like hearing like the bells and I was like, okay. And I remember thinking like, it's going to come, it's going to happen. I remember something that I learned actually from Star Trek, which was, you know, look, you're either going to die or you're not, (laughs) but but you really have to just stay like, like serial killer calm when that music starts. Cause if you start to panic and like try to get out of there like faster than you should you'll miss your jump and then you will die you know so i just remember being like dun 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 and megan's just kind of like are you, are you gonna get out i'm like i just gotta be it's calm fine. man it's fine honey, honey I, it's fine <laughs> it's and so i got out i was like oh god oh thank god you know it's like it's like once the <laughs> like like danger is gone like then you can panic you know but uh yeah so that that music cue i think is uh definitely i guess holds up in the sense that it still causes intense dread and panic so. well i assume when the composer sat down they were like how can i make this stick with people like literally always <laughs> <laughs> like i i think that honestly if if i was like walking if somebody had like that set as a ringtone which i think Actually, now I'm gonna. I gotta do this. But like, if somebody had that set as like their notification or their ringtone. Like, so I'm just like walking along, and all of a sudden I'm like in like a gap, and I hear like dun 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 dun. dun. I'm just like, like I have to find the source of that so, noise. Some stranger is gonna grab you like by the collar and be like, "Answer it for the love of God! Answer the phone." <laughs> I feel like I'm drowning. Yeah. So yeah, I, it, I, I will throw another nod to good level design, though, which is in Chemical Plant in Super Fun Time Zone. Um, <laughs> uh, that spot where that happens, unless you know exactly what to do before the blocks are even on screen, I think you have to be underwater long enough that the the panic music starts. So it's like, hey, drowning is a thing in this game. Yeah. This, this Mario, this is not. Yes, yes. And I, and I do think that um, even in the audio, the audio cues are on point with that because like you're like, you're like, you're underwater. It's totally cool. Whatever. And you're like this, like, ding. And you're like, what was that? You know? <laughs> huh, yeah. That, that yeah. sounded like a timer. Yeah. What whatever. And then like, ding. And you're like, hmm, hmm. Feel like that's, feel like I should be doing something about this. And then, and then, yeah. And then once, once you get a countdown timer on the screen and that, 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 the blood panic music, like, <laughs> If if that hasn't cued you in that, you know, you, you need to do something about the situation immediately, then I don't think you should have a car. 
No, like, pro- probably not. <laughs> yeah, if, if that much alarm bells doesn't indicate what the problem is, that's why office buildings in some states have to have like a fire marshal so that when the fire alarm goes off, someone it's actually their job to walk around the floor and make sure everybody has left. Because hmm. it's like you go, you find Jim from accounting and you're like, Jim, the building is burning down. The spreadsheets can wait. And it's like, <laughs> no, no, it's probably just a false alarm. And it's like, didn't you see us all leaving? Don't you smell the smoke? And it's like, no, no, I'm sure it's fine. It goes off all the time. And it's like, okay, I guess die in a fire, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Literally, like like you're you're going to die. And, and, and also, too, it's like, you know, it's like, oh, it's probably just a false alarm. It's like risk to reward, you know, like <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Close your laptop and let's go. Yeah. yeah, Just like take a look around, you know, are you the only one left? (laughs) Maybe follow up on that a little bit, you know? So I will say for the music that uh, as as much 8 and 16-bit music as I have deeply, deeply burned into my psyche, I don't think there was a single piece of music in this game that I didn't immediately recognize and more importantly couldn't think of times in the last like three months I was humming out loud Mm. like I I just it was kind of almost shocking to me like oh I do sing this all the time (laughs) and like there were a couple levels where I actually like lean same kind of thing you know Sue behind me on the couch reading a book or doing a puzzle or something and I would like turn around and be like this is that song I'm whistling all the time (laughs) (laughs) yeah I don't think that the music stuck with me quite to that degree Um, I definitely think that all the music was very uh, in keeping because I think with these levels, like there's much more difference in each level's aesthetic than there is in like Mario, you know, like, yeah, it's not a cohesive world in any way. Yeah, no, it's, it's just kind of like, you know, like, and, and it'd actually be kind of interesting to draw a map layout, like assuming that Sonic went linearly from wherever he started to the end. Right. So it's like, (laughs) it's like, you know, like, so there's like this like nice plains area or probably more like a plateau, but you know, like, you know, it's like nice, like, you know, like, like fun, like forest or whatever. And then, you know, it's like, oh, okay. And then uh, clearly the industrial plant that has like, you know, been given birth to, which is then right next to a casino, which I guess I could see, like, maybe that's all the waste <laughs> and runoff from the casino, you know? Yeah. You're starting to make me think that maybe there's like a small amount of through line to this. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, I, d- I definitely think that, thought that all of the music was in keeping with the level. Like, you know, like there wasn't, you know, like a, in the chemical one, it had that very kind of like industrial kind of feel. And I definitely feel like it, it enhanced the visuals in that sense. Um, I will say though that, like I said, like the drowning music and the music for when you're trying to get get you some of those sweet sweet chaos emeralds. The, that, the special zone music. Yes, the special zone music. That is, I don't want to say like I, but that that I recognized immediately. You know, mostly probably because I remember. You know, it's like no, you you had one ring left to to get before you get that sexy seventh chaos emerald. Oh, I'm like God, and it does the screw you like uh, uh, yeah, like you're just like. Uh. <laughs> Yeah, like like hey, hey, I know you're feeling bad about yourself. Feel a little worse, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, with the big thumbs down. Yeah, yeah. Which which was basically a middle finger. It was just a big giant middle finger. Yeah, pretty much. And it's a big white glove. So it's like, is is this another fourth wall break? Like is Sonic looking at me and being like, nope. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, is it basically he's just kind of like, I could do this better. Like, like, like it's like emo Sonic, you know, so he's like, <laughs> well, I could do this better if I wanted to, but I'm just letting you control me, you know, and I it's... just don't want to. <laughs> so speaking of controls, beautiful segue. Yeah, um, there you go. I feel like the most uh, underutilized button in a lot of platformers is the down on the D-pad. Mm. Sonic does not have that problem because... Yeah. Running at a thousand miles an hour to the point where you are literally going outside the view of the camera, the only way to survive that most of the time is to be holding down so that you're rolling so that if you do collide with something, you might kill it. Right. Yeah. No, I would definitely agree with that. Like, you know, being able to pull into the ball spin, I think that that was very tight. I think, though, speaking of the going so fast that you are (laughs) literally shattering the like god camera's ability to keep up with you you know like um i thought that that was something that i mm, that the game i don't want to say struggled with but having that kind of speed it then makes it difficult to blunt your momentum if you do happen to see something that like is going to be a problem you know so there would be like a, a lot of times where i'd be running and i'd like 
come to like the edge of something i'm like new and it like <laughs> st- like like hold back as hard as i could on the thing to like stop but it was like nah man you're going like a billion miles an hour like i could hear t- sonic's like tendons like cracking as like he desperately <laughs> tried to like come to a halt but i still was, I was like no the the, the the die has been cast the bullets left the chamber i am i am just on board for this well the odds of it ever happening have got to be like approaching zero but uh, one of the big differences between uh, Sonic and some of the other unnamed platformers of the day are uh, when you're like right on the edge of something, mm-hmm. you you kind of like freak out like you're going to fall. And then if you are facing the other direction, so like if you have your back to the ledge, you kind of do a different like, oh, my God, I'm going to fall motion. Right. Mm-hmm. And I would lo- I would love to think that there are times in the game where the level design would make it such that you would slam on the brakes and pull right to an edge like that mm-hmm. and then do the little cartoony animation <laughs> but I mean the there's just no way like there there's no. no way you would because there's nothing that actually stops you like right at the ledge like you just either bull right over or because you're holding back and the second you stop moving forward, you just immediately start moving backwards. Right. So, no, so if that, there's, if there's that no did like happen, sliding. That would be like, yeah. If that did happen, that would be like something that you would tell your children and they would tell their children. <laughs> like the one time this happened in a Sonic game. <laughs> um, I, so I thought, I thought that was kind of something and I, and I felt that the platforming was not, it was, it was good. It was not as tight as Mario. Like, your especially your mid-air control i thought was a little bit looser you know so like if i jumped in a direction you know and then like i was like oh no i kind of like over gauge that so i'm like pulling back you know i didn't have quite as much mid-air control as i did in mario you know see i feel and maybe this is based on the way i play mario games but one of the biggest differences between the controls in most platformers but i mean mario in particular and sonic is where's the run button in sonic Nope. nope. So you're always running, which makes your the way you respond in midair different. And more importantly, there's only one way. Like you, when you press back in midair, you respond with the same way whether you were at a dead stop or you were moving forward. Whereas with Mario, if you are running and you your your run momentum like carries into the way he controls in the air. Whereas right. if you're not running, it's like a little bit more sluggish. So I actually found with Sonic, I was frequently <laughs> kind of moving in like a super ungraceful where like <laughs> I would jump toward a platform and then I was afraid I was going to overshoot it. So I'd like start to arrest my momentum and then I would like undershoot it and then I would like add momentum back in. So I'm like drawing these ridiculous zigzags in the air and it's like that yeah. doesn't even look like that. That's not believable. <laughs> that's not something that winning hedgehogs do, you know, like, like, like that's not a recipe for success. Yeah, I, I definitely feel that that was a an, an issue that that I struggled with a lot, especially in you know the uh, you know waste runoff zone. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's funny because there is actually the oil zone. Oh the yeah, oil, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oil, not that oil one. ocean. Yeah, no, yeah, no. But the, then there's the, also this chemical is, plant. This is all you know, hazardous, volatile, and semi volatile chemicals. You know, <laughs> like like horrible extracts and stuff. Anyways, but uh, when I was in that one. We're like, there were, there's, and, 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 yeah, well, I'll come back to that. But anyway, so, (laughs) so like I was in like one area of the level where there were two platforms that like come together and touch and then move away. And I had to get from platform A to platform B. And I screwed that up, I think at least half a dozen times, you know? (laughs) And I was just starting to get frustrated because like, like, and and I was just kind of like, I, I should be able to do this, but <laughs> this is not the hero's journey at this point. Like, this is not like, you know, this is a part of the story that like gets left out, you know, yeah, where it's yeah. like, and then Sonic spent five minutes trying to do <laughs> the most mundane of tasks, you know? So, so yeah, well, like that, that was something. And we can't possibly talk about the controls without talking about supersonics controls. So were you able to get all of the chaos emeralds? No, I wasn't. And, and in fact, because here's what happened was, <laughs> <laughs> was I, I i got like into the first you know like thing and it was like you know ah you lost and i was like whatever you know so i i, I tried again <laughs> i don't even care yeah i was like i don't, I don't need no chaos i almost i got I, I did it again right and two things happened one is i got within one ring of getting the chaos emerald mm-hmm. and then got the thumbs down you stink and i was like if i'm struggling this much 
on the first level, the chances <laughs> of me getting all seven, because I remember it getting like increasingly difficult, you know? Oh, yes. So so I was just kind of like, there's no way I'm going to actually get it. But I was like, but, you know, whatever. It's 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 a fun little mini game. But then I remembered the other thing that I'm not sure I agree with as a game mechanic, which is that it robs you of all of your rings when you come back to the real world. So I promptly died right after <laughs> failing to get the Chaos Emerald. And I was like, yeah, I'm not going to try anymore. Like, I'm not, this is... This is an avenue that is that is off limits to me. <laughs> that that's fair. So, you know, th this game being my childhood gem and all, I was like, I, I have to make an effort, right? Yeah. And so I, I think I got through the first four of them on the first try, and then like the nice. fifth one, I think I had to do two times, and then the sixth one I had to do like four times, and then the seventh one I had to do like way too many times <laughs> and, and the thing that i forgot until i got to the seventh one and it was it's like one of those things that i knew instinctively and i just hadn't really rehashed it while i angrily like punched the controller <laughs> was the the like fifth sixth and seventh stage there are blind corners mm. around which bombs come so you cannot possibly react to a visual cue because there isn't one intentionally so <laughs> yeah so you have to actually just memorize the stage and and of course by this point i'm like angrily explaining this to susan and she's like <laughs> she's like so then it, well so then how do you do that you just have to memorize it and i was like yes which is yep. bullshit <laughs> <laughs> yeah no there, there were definitely a number of areas in the game uh it i mean especially like i said like i i, I struggled you know, it's, it's just kind of like if somebody like, you know, hands you like a, a, you know, hop on pop and you're like, I don't know if I can really like follow this. It's like, <laughs> well, if you, if you want to hang, you're eventually going to have to read Atlas Shrugged and be like, I'm not even going to try to hop on pop. I'm done. You know, like, <laughs> like I just I knew that I was so starkly out of my depth. But that actually um, does speak to one of the places where I got very, very, very frustrated on a couple of times. <laughs> and I paused it and turned to Megan and said, nope, you see, this is garbage. <laughs> Is, is there are definitely absolutely times when the game just straight up checks you just to remind you that it's the game and you are you are but a player you're you are it's on you know you control sonic and it controls you but like i remember i remember the one that that i thought was the most frustrating was it was in the um uh the the underground mine tunnel one yeah, I don't remember the name of that one, so you're good to go. <laughs> sweet, sweet. So in in, in, in the underground the super fun land, mine, which is is interesting because like it, there's a lot of forest in this mine, but whatever. So you know, like like well, you, is it, the oh that one, yeah, crap. What is that called? Go on, <laughs> the forest mine. Like. Yeah, the forest <laughs> mine. Obviously, <laughs> duh. Um. Anyway, so uh, you know, there, there are those little like vines that hang down that you jump onto and grab, and it pulls down and then it releases you know like the platform underneath you right yes a mechanic it, i think you see zero other times yes no it is it is here it is a single difference in kind and then like it just goes away forever and you're like fine whatever so that's fine you know i i think the visual cues were good enough on that where it's like this looks different i'm gonna see how i interact with it and i did and so at one point like i'm like jamming around i've got zero rings you know so i'm like all right gotta, gotta keep on the eye look out for rings and so i jumped up and grabbed the thing and then because it's right up on the roof from behind the roof right <laughs> so definitely couldn't see it like one of those flashlight bug things comes and just murders me and i say murders because he didn't like kill me there was no like struggle like he just came out <laughs> And just iced me, you know, like 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 a drug deal gone bad, you know. And so, so like, and and I remember because like when you die, right, it pauses the screen, you know, shows you like what it was. And so I paused the game and I got Megan's attention. I'm like, you see that? You see the bug thing that's literally right on the thing that they're telling me to hold on to? That's garbage. Like that is just, <laughs> I did everything right, you know. Like the game taught me to do this and then killed me for it, you know, like. And so I was just, I was disproportionately upset about that particular loss of life. No, that, that level I think is probably the buggiest forest mine. I mean, which goes to show like, what is all this forest doing down here? So, <laughs> so like that is, I think that's probably the buggiest level, not necessarily the most frustrating level, but it's the level where when you die, you're most likely to be like, well, the game cheated, right? Yes. Because yeah. there's a, 
there's like spikes that just like emerge from the wall no, and you, right? you, you have like about two frames where you can see them. And it, I think in, in, in some defense of Sonic's level design, <clears throat> not just here, but in, in a lot of places is your rings are recoverable, right? Which means, and, and, and you only have to have one to not die. So yeah. if you do something stupid or the game does something that seems like it's unfair, then as long as you don't die, but you just lose all your rings and you get like a single ring back. You're like, well, I guess I learned my lesson and you can tell that there are certain things they designed in the levels with that in mind. Yes. That being said <laughs> at the end of act two of forest mine, the last save thing. I have no idea what those things are called. The little stop. Oh yeah. The, 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 the port. Yeah. The portals to the the Chaos Emerald prisons. Those <laughs> prisons. <laughs> so I, the, I assume that they were imprisoned. Anyways, but <laughs> yeah, I think they're like uh, sentient items in D anD. d Like they just do what they want. <laughs> <laughs> so you you hit that thing, and then you go down a short little walkway, and you fight the boss. And I mean, it is a neither here nor there boss. He's, it's fine. He's got a little drill, and uh, or two drills actually. He like goes up and down. And then if you die and you go back to that save continue point, there are no rings that you, that you can get to before you have to fight Robotnik again, which means if you couldn't do it the first time, your only option now is perfection. Right. Yeah. Like you, you can screw this up none's times because, and that is one of the things that's like you said, is interesting is that like, if you have rings, the 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 mechanics the the skill challenge is completely different because you know if I'm, if you like you said if you even have one ring you can literally get hit an infinite number of times so long as you keep recovering that ring right yep. if you have no rings you can get hit zero times and that's kind of like weird and i think that overall the game tries i think it tries to leverage that um and and i did like at first i was like like blind angry with like the nth thing that I thought was like not okay that it killed me. Right. But then I, I, I realized I was like, well, the difference between this and Mario is that Mario, there's like maybe three or four power ups in the entire level. So that means you can only get hit three or four times, you know? Whereas with Sonic, you can theoretically get hit an infinite number of times. But then, uh, and I don't know if this is just me defending my rage or, <laughs> or actually like, like a legitimate thought, but uh, is I was like, whether or not the game, the game is more punishing or less punishing an unfair death still never feels good you know no, or, no, or being popped, popped for a reason like even though it's like well it didn't kill me i still didn't like it though <laughs> so you know that yeah, and and in those instances where it's like the the piranha in like world one like you world one sorry sonic in emerald hill zone <laughs> it's like calling your girlfriend by her by your ex's name you know <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry baby i just i saw her on facebook earlier that was all <laughs> so, like, so you're you're running and you have not yet learned how to like jump an attack or that the role essentially makes you immortal in most cases and so you get hit by the piranha thing which comes seemingly out of nowhere Mm-hmm. And there's an argument to be made that from a design perspective, it's like, well, we really wanted you to get hit. So that's right. why we took a cheap shot. But then by like the, you know, eighth or ninth zone, when there, <laughs> you you get hit with a cheap shot, you're like, I get it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Like, I mean, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's like, and being an only child, but from what I've heard, like having like an older brother that occasionally just like hits you up the back of the head and is just like, just so you know. And it's like, no, I get it. Like, yeah, yeah. No, the, the first time, still remember it. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and so speaking of undeserving deaths, um, <laughs> like there were a couple of times when I died where I was just kind of like, ah, oh, right. So like one of them was in the, uh, the, the casino Royale game, right? Um, <laughs> Close <laughs> enough. <laughs> So uh, is where you um, like it has like those like giant blue moving block platforms, which I remember from being in Vegas, you know, those being around. Yeah, they're all over. And I mean, you could see people getting crushed to death. It was kind of (laughs) terrible. (laughs) But that's how you that's how you know people who like really know Vegas and people who, you know, are just like the tourists, you know, (laughs) they get crushed to death. (laughs) 
<laughs> Go back <laughs> to your town. <laughs> Um, but anyways, yeah. And so like, it was like moving and I was standing on the edge of it, but apparently I was just enough on the edge that I clipped the side, you know, and it crushed me to death, you know, (laughs) instead of just shunting me like that centimeter away, like would actually happen if you were like moving and it'd just be like, Oh, I was like, Nope, crushed to death. I was just like, what the, Oh yeah, fine. Whatever. You know, (laughs) like, yeah, I mean, this is an artifact of. All older, I mean, all games technically have a hitbox of some kind, but I mean, on older games, your hitbox is like literally a box. So yeah. if you if you cross that threshold by a single pixel, unless yeah. they specifically programmed like a gray area of survival, you're going <laughs> to die in what visually seems to make no sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like so, like I said, like like with that one, I was just kind of like. <sighs> Yeah, no, I get it. Like, fine, whatever, like that happened. But then what what, what made me, like, rage quit and then actually go play another video game for a little <laughs> bit to, like, like detox was so, um, like, I died. I, I thought the difficulty curve was a little off because I died zero times in Green Hill Zone. And then I died three times in Chemical Wasteland, right? And... I didn't get a whole lot of extra lives. So now I'm like going through with like one life left. Right. And I'm like, I don't think I can finish the game with one life. Right. So I didn't, I died again. And then it <laughs> continue. And I was like, that's, that's cool. That's legit. Because like, if it's like your real punishment is that you have to do act one and two, you know, I was like, that's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll muscle through. And then um, I died. So I started playing a little bit looser and then I died a couple more times. And then this time it said game over forever, dying a fire. And I was like, huh? Yeah, like, you gotta you gotta set number of continues, buddy. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. And and I didn't feel like that was like, you know, clear, or at least at least I wasn't paying close enough attention to notice it that, that you don't that you have a limited number of continues, you know. So I was just kind of like, so it was like, no, nope, go back to level one. And then I was like, all right, fine. And then I got hit by a prana again. And I was like, yeah, I need a minute. <laughs> just, you know, just 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 give me a second, you know. So like, yeah, that that, that was just something that I thought was like frustrating was it, it's you know like it, let me phrase that it's punishing you know yes. is it like the place where i was struggling i now have to get through all of this other stuff again just to get a crack at it you know and that's just that wasn't and, fun. and <laughs> we've been kind of tiptoeing around uh level design and 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 game design but um the lack of a true like save mechanic i mean granted uh sonic 2 is like noticeably shorter than say super mario world yes so i mean there's an argument to be made that because like i beat it and lots of kids beat it and it can be beaten that the game is a proper length to not require a save but that was i feel like that was at a time in in history when it was like well we don't really need a save mechanic but going back now it's like oh dear god yeah you're telling me like if i just want to sit down for five minutes and play like you know casino dumpster fire zone like (laughs) i have to beat the first two places first and i mean yeah yeah, there's like the level select cheat code and i did screw around with that a little after i beat the game but i was just kind of like yeah i kind of i kind of just want to be able to save yeah no i i would definitely agree with that and i think that um that yeah that basically you know like it is is if you want to like you know, like you said like play a certain level or do do that then he's like oh i've got to slog through all of this other stuff and also too one of the things i noticed is that the levels are highly stratified in that like i would be like going fast and i would like fire across like a ledge and i and i would just see briefly that there is stuff both above and below me that is worth exploring that is now off limits to me because i have like fired way past it right so it's I would definitely say that that gives the game a lot more replayability because then you know, you can go back and like explore areas of a world that you didn't, you know, get to the first time. But then that's also frustrating because if you really want to explore not Green Hill Zone, you got to get through <laughs> Green Hill Zone, you know? Yeah. It's uh Green Hill Zone is Sonic 1, Emerald Hill Zone is Oh, Sonic. yeah. Ooh. They we upgraded. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, that's that that's them, that's them ten dollar words, man. You know, like, <laughs> oh my, oh my stars so, and garters. So I, I, <laughs> so I feel like the um, the best 
zone that exemplifies the, hey, there's other ways you can get from point A to point B is the chemical plant. But it's kind of the the path I took every single time I played that level was the same one because <laughs> it's the one that you're most likely to like trip and roll down. Right. And then once you get moving, like you're friggin' hauling. Like oh, yeah. there's no other place in the game where you are as likely to outrun the camera as in that level. Yeah. And absolutely. it's just like, am I really going to start the game over to go see what that other loop looks like? No, <laughs> no, no, not, it will I'm just, not. as far as I'm concerned, it just has like, you know, 15 boxes all invincibilities and like rings and it's just made out of like happiness and like you know like there's total party yeah there's 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 like there's like nice looking female hedgehogs and like whatever but you know what i'm not gonna it's fine it's effectively dead to me um and speaking of uh uh this harkens back to visual cues a little bit but um is the invincibility mechanic i don't feel that it does an amazing job letting you know when it's about to run out because it tells you uh, nothing yeah it just 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 stops (laughs) yeah as opposed to like with mario where like there's you know like you're like all glowy and and stardusty and whatever and then like the stardust goes away and then the glow slows down and it's only like a couple of seconds but it's letting you know like hey this is gonna this 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 party's about to come to a close you know quit walking on lava and speaking of walking on lava, I was <laughs> flouting the game's mechanics as I was like, I'm invincible. I'm walking on lava. No big. Oh, my God, I'm dying. You know, and like and so then I in true throwing good money after bad fashion. I was like, well, I've now been hit, so I have to continue to run on lava to collect rings. And so I was in this weird purgative state of like <laughs> running on lava and getting hit and trying to collect rings. And I was just like in like this like bizarre panic mode. And I was just kind of like. Yeah, man, if I had just gotten like a little bit of a heads up, like, hey, you, your your invincibility cocaine party is about to come to a crashing <laughs> close, I wouldn't be in this situation. Well, for just a minute, you got to feel what it was like to be dangerously addicted to gambling <laughs> <laughs> because you're on the lava, you lose all your rings. And then you grab like a few back and you're like, no, no, I can fix this. <laughs> and then you take damage again and you lose all your rings, but you don't get as many back as you got the first time. Yeah. But, but you're like this time, like, and, and, and with the gambling, I actually, with, uh, in the casino zone, like I was like, oh, I remember this. And I jumped in and it was like, haha, you got robot And I was like, whatever. So I jumped back in again. It's like, um, well, you got tails this time. So, you know, here's a little bit of money. And I was like, I'm walking away. Like, <laughs> I just I gotta I gotta cash in my chips, and and actually something that I wanted to this this doesn't deal with really game design at all, but I thought it was interesting, <laughs> which is that so like you know, t- everybody wants to be Sonic, nobody wants to be Tails, right? You know, true, true story, right? But it's kind of like one of those things that you don't really like say out loud. You know, it's like <laughs> saying like you know so and so is a poor man, so and so you know like yeah, that's you rough. know, yeah, yeah. They assign a monetary value to Sonic and Tails. So you can literally say in coin <laughs> ring value how much better Sonic is <laughs> within the game. Like the game says like, oh, well, if it, you know, Sonic is worth 50 coins and a Tails is worth 10 coins. So take that. Ta- like that. That's that's awful, man. <laughs> like, yeah. That's- yeah. He, you know, he doesn't even get special animations if you get all the Chaos Emeralds as Tails. Yeah, like when he becomes Super Tails, he's just like he's just Tails. Yeah, he's just yeah, they just couldn't just even be bothered. And nope. it's like it's not like he's an old forgotten character. Like this was his introductory game. Yes. Yeah. No. Like this was like like it was like Sonic and Tails, and you're like, oh my goodness, Tails. Which, by the way, I was of a age older than I would like to admit before I got the Miles, <laughs> Miles Tails Prower Miles Tails Prower thing. Yeah, I, I was. <laughs> I was seeking higher education before I, <laughs> before I got that pun. Somebody's oh, yeah. like, "Oh yeah, miles per hour, like miles per hour," and I was like, "And I remember at the time being like, don't, 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 don't let them know, <laughs> don't let them know, nobody knows." <laughs> no, I I suspect that there will be a, a lot of times throughout this series that we're like, "Oh, it's like, <laughs> like watching uh, watching Animaniacs with my three year old." There's jokes where I'm like, I remember recognizing that that was a thing that people thought was funny when I was like nine. But now as a post 30 year old, I'm like, 
how did my parents allow me to watch this? <laughs> and then I kind of looked down at my kid watching it, and I'm like, oh, it's actually really easy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because like it, all of the – because things like that, if it's well-crafted enough, it will just fly right over their head, you know? I mean, especially I think that, you know, Crystal Gems does a great job of like stuff, <laughs> stuff like that where it's just kind of like, well, fusion sex. But they have no frame of reference for sex, so it's just gem fusion. But it's 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 sex, you know. Probably. But, uh, Although we we I I have more to debate with you on that separate from this because yeah. I, I have more evidence on my side that maybe it's not sex. Although it definitely seems like it is. Um. <laughs> so, so my thing with tails, uh, talking about like game design is, um, he he's not really there to help you except in these incredibly specific circumstances. A lot of the time, especially if you are timid, like if you hesitate a little, there's a really good chance that Tails is going to inadvertently or maybe advertently murder you. Absolutely. <laughs> I think it's on purpose. Like, yeah. I mean, like, I, I remember because he knows he's only worth a fifth of Sonic and he's like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> only one <laughs> only of us is immortal, leg. rich man. Well, and, and to be fair, like, I think the Tails death to Sonic death ratio hits about that because. Um, one of the things that that I, I said offhand because I'm you know, a terrible person was um, <laughs> is that like you know so when I play games especially when we go back and play older games I like to like come up with like fun like little head cannons to just make it more entertaining and basically I was like okay so in my mind every time Tails died it was his son that like now accompanies <laughs> me on the journey you know and so I was like I've gone through like fifty Tails like and 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 like well, ge generations I, of Tails exactly so I was like so I am just the Sonic like I am I I always have been and always will be like you know so it sounds like there's a it's it's partially making me think of like a sci-fi novel I can't think of the name of and that Doctor Who episode with like the clones who like they think yes. they've been at war, they've been at war their entire lives. But what you as the viewer don't know is that their entire lives are like ours because th they die so fast during the war. Yeah. Yeah. So and it's, it's like, like that, they, there's, there's like, like a week. Yeah. Before, <laughs> before Tails like sends his son out to, you know, age Sonic, he's like this legendary godlike figure. <laughs> it's like we, we, for generations, we have been aiding the Sonic in his, ba <laughs> his battle against the Eggman. Yes. You know, and it's just like this like huge, you know, thing. And, and then, I mean, and then the fact that Sonic can turn into like super Sonic, it's like, ah, I remember my great grandfather told me tales of one time, you know, when, uh, when the Sonic turned bright gold, but we have not seen it for generations. And it was like one level ago, you know, like, <laughs> I just didn't play that level very well, and Tails has died and died and died. Just over and over again. So, like, the one time when I was like, run, 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 and I, like, hit the edge, I was like, wait, stop. And Tails was like, hey, I'm taking this bus, and, like, jumped on the platform, and the platform, like, moved yes. with him. I was, like, I was like, goodbye. I mean, goodbye, son. Like, you know, like, <laughs> nothing what I you can do now. Yeah, I just, like, watched, I watched my death, like, happen, you know? I was like, this is just, this is the end of my story. Well, and he <laughs> he's almost always facing you so like <laughs> he he jumps on the thing and then turns back at you and gives you like the 1994 version of the luigi death stare and he's just yeah. like like mm. yeah and then and then he dies because you know like he like goes off camera right but so it's like definitely like a suicide one it's just kind of like no 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 i'm gonna go down and he, and, and so it might, again my 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 head cannon head right so that tail's knew that the sonic was evil like that the sonic was killing <laughs> tails and he's like this will end my life but i will end the sonic but then he doesn't know the sonic has like an extra guy so you know <laughs> so it's ultimately <laughs> meaningless anyways so, so i can't remember <laughs> at what specific point he was frustratingly murdering me by accident but um susan you know again like kind of was like you know, wow, the because I'm complaining about him murdering me, and, <laughs> and she was like, you know, yeah, AI's come a long way, and like secondary characters, and I just because I've been playing this game most of my life, I just sort of flippantly was like, oh no, he doesn't have any AI, he just does exactly what you do, but like half a second later, so like you jump, he jumps, you run, he runs, you go left, he goes left, and she was just like, wait, what? <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? Why yeah. does he just do exactly what you do, but half a second later? Like, how many instances could this possibly be useful in? And I think you actually encountered 
like the only one I was able to think of, which is with the grabby spider thing. Yeah. Yeah. We're basically like the, you know, the, the spider dude like came down and like grabbed me because I, but because I jumped tail jumped that half second later and like wiped out the spider dude. But yeah, that was like the only time when, you know, tails was like useful. I think from a game design point, like it, it, the main thing is that he gave your friends something to do while you sonic about, you know, <laughs> Well, but, uh, in, in the in the bonus stages, so if you play the game, you can choose to play as Sonic and Tails, which is the default, mm-hmm. Sonic or just Tails. And I mean, to be fair, Tails performs exactly like Sonic. I think yeah. he even has the same size hitbox. Like, I mean, they are functionally identical. They're just visually different. And it wasn't until Sonic 3 that they added in the where you could actually fly like manually. So they're, they're, it, they're the same. Um, right. But... In the special zone, and this is just another way that they freaking screw with you, and it's more like an old school arcade game than like a modern game we think of now, is those spots where you know the bombs are coming, like you can see them, you don't have to jump over the bombs. You have to jump over the bombs with enough leeway that Tails will jump over the bombs. So in the in the spots, especially in like the sixth and seventh special zone, where you have to memorize that the bombs are coming, you also have to memorize when to jump early enough that tails will also not hit the bombs. Yes, <laughs> yes, and that is insanely obnoxious. And then you sit down and you you take a deep breath and you say, "I can think of a million better things to do with my brain capacity than have this memorized." And yet here I am memorizing because yeah. like you want to win. I mean, obviously, oh, yeah. you know. But yeah, like like. With stuff like that where I'm just kind of like, oh, right, I have to remember thing A. Also, I should probably remember to go to the grocery store later today and, like, all this other <laughs> stuff, you know? Like, 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 wait, wait, when's my son's birthday again? You know, like, it's like, <laughs> but, but I remember where those bombs are, right? Yeah, no, it, that's, that's, that's literally why um, your description of the bonus stages is why I'm very happy with my decision making of, <laughs> of, of, like, just calling it on on stage one, being like, Mm-mm, no, this is not, ain't going to be my jam. Well, so you, I know you gave up on the, the bonus stages, but did you, you didn't beat the game? No, no, I, I, I did not. I got, um, I got the, the rage quitting moment and I was like, you know, I think <laughs> I, I, I think I've got enough information. And actually one thing I, de- I do definitely want to uh, touch on, um, that I thought was a very, something I didn't notice that would be so insanely frustrating, but like having just played Mario, I was like, this is handled very differently which is like you said like when you're underwater you can drown right which you can't as mario and that's fine but what what you can do in mario that i didn't realize was so important is you swim sonic <laughs> does not swim no sonic runs like a jerk underwater <laughs> yeah no the the water sections of sonic games are to remind you that even god can bleed because it's, <laughs> it's, it's like it's like, gotta go fast. What if you couldn't go fast? Yes. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what I would do. What if you couldn't go fast and also you were about to die? It's like, yeah. I really don't know what I would do. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's you know, like, like you know, she broke your throne. She cut your hair, you know? Like, it's it's that very, like, the, 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 the you know, kryptonite, like, stuff. <laughs> but, no, because, like, I, I got frustrated because, you know, it, yeah, it's like moving around inside of a giant fat kid and, you know, like... <laughs> Like you just maybe would have gone with like molasses or something. Sure, whatever. <laughs> I mean, whatever, man. You know, don't, whatever floats your boat. But uh, um, anyways, but yeah, you know. So like, I remember I was underwater, and it was on in the uh, the the whatever treetops stage. I forget. Yeah, that one. one. The one with like the Aztec kind of music. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, where um, you know, those arrows fly out of basically nowhere the first time until they like come all out of the pillars they they do come out of the pillars but first time i'm like huh that's a weird dr eggman face i wonder if i can like jump on it or interact with it in some way and i got an arrow <laughs> in between my eyes and i was like oh right that's right those things shoot arrows what did you learn <laughs> yeah no but i was like definitely like like in my mind like closely inspecting it you know <laughs> and it just hit me in the face it was in that level where basically like a pillar dropped down, right? So, and I'm underwater and luckily there's a bubble area right before it. Otherwise I would have just died. But so now there's like an area about the size of your hitbox that you have to jump through. And that took me more time than I would like to admit <laughs> to actually get through because I kept jumping, but being right next to it, you couldn't get enough momentum to jump through. So you would jump like mm. straight up. Right, so then I'm like, okay, I'm gonna back up and a then, little bit. Then you feel like a jackass because you just go, and then, 
in yeah. place. Exactly. So I did that three or four times. And then, of course, every, you know, two or three times I tried, I had to stop and wait. So that way I didn't miss the life-giving bubble that is going, you know. So, <laughs> so I was just kind of like, yeah, no, the actual ability to redirect yourself completely while swimming that you can in Mario by hitting A and then that changes your trajectory by swimming. I'm like, I didn't know how important that was to me until this very moment. Yeah, I mean, they could have maybe found other way like a debuff so it's like instead of the speed shoes you get the slow shoes and like you're you're debuffed for a while to rob you of the thing that essentially makes sonic sonic but instead they had to pair it with a brutal suffocating death (laughs) you know as you do but uh but yeah no i thought that was very a very interesting different way in a platformer to handle the swimming mechanics i'm interested to see how some other non-iconic games handle that so i'll before i i talk to you about the end part that you didn't make it to um (laughs) i i do have to say this one thing uh and i i think i may have told you this story but uh when i was a kid my birthday was coming up and my parents you know i came from a middle class family it's not like they showered down gifts on me but they were like what do you want for your birthday and sonic 3d blast had just come out and I was like, it was because I never had a Sega CD, so this was like a 3D. And I mean, the Sonic CD was 2D anyway, but I was like, this was like the it, man. Like it was Sonic, right. but in three dimensions. <laughs> a so, whole extra dimension. Yeah. And it was isometric, which was weird. But anyway, so it was like, that. that's what I want. So like we went to the store and we bought it and then we came home. And they like left the. They were gonna like leave me alone to just like you know indulge in my hedonistic pleasure. And I just, I have this crystal clear memory of going back to my mother like forty five minutes later in tears, holding the <laughs> game because on my first attempt, I had beat the entire game with all of the chaos emeralds without dying. Whoa! Yeah, <laughs> it was just, and That's... it's not. Like, I'm not this, like, amazing, like, god of video games. It's just that game was awful. And they, because they added in that extra dimension, they just, like, dialed the difficulty down so far as to make it, like, a young child's game. Like, a toddler's video game. Right, yeah. Like, 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 Emily would, would be able to beat that game yeah so playing sonic 2 and going into the special stages i was like oh dear god this is the height of sonic in 3d (laughs) (laughs) like i know sonic adventure that came out later was like it was fine but like those bonus stages with the cheating bombs that come out of nowhere and like the stupid thumbs down if you screw up by even a single ring like that's the best 3d sonic ever got yep and then it just kind of kept circling the drain. And then, you know, in true throwing good money after bad fashion, it's like, so like Sonic circling the drain. And so like Tails goes in to save him, but then like Tails starts to struggle. So they're like, it, Knuckles, you know, so then like they throw <laughs> Knuckles in there. And like, no, nah, they're still drowning. Throw in, throw in Shadow. What? I don't know. Just, just keep, keep, keep more characters, you know? <laughs> he looks just and, like uh, Sonic. Give him a gun. Then people can tell him apart. Yeah, yeah, that's that's something that I think every childhood video, every childhood video game needs is a character with a gun, you know? Yeah. A beloved childhood character who also has like a Glock. <laughs> hey man, you know, like like how's Sonic gonna protect himself, you know, from it? I mean, to be fair, how many times has he had to fight Eggman now? And maybe now at this point he's just kinda like, Yeah, you know what? I bet a bullet sells this situation a lot more permanently. <laughs> You know, I'm going to stop jumping on you, and I'm going to start shooting at you. <laughs> we'll see how many more animals you put in robots, you freak. <laughs> but, yeah, so the ending. That yeah, I did, so, so the, certainly yeah, did the, not get to. the last stage, like literally the, the final, final boss fight, which is nothing but that. So, like, there is no last stage. It's just you fight Metal Sonic, and then you fight Dr. Eggman, Robotnik, in his mm. big Robotnik suit. And the Robotnik fight is pretty hard because it's one of the few times in the game where there are things that seem to be in the background and foreground, but they're absolutely on the plane that will kill you (laughs) except for like this half an instant where they won't. So Hmm. yeah. So that fight is like, if you push it and you want to hit him as many times as you can, as fast as you can, then you risk dying if you miss this thing by like a single pixel and like his finger touches you 
or it's just super tedious because you have to like shoot back and forth. But here's the thing. You mentioned the difficulty curve feeling like it's a little off. The last stage, the, oh God, it has like a funny name, Eggman Zone, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> there are no rings in it. Yeah, I remember that. Like so, so the entire game, they've been teaching you like, hey, if you get hit, grab some rings because that's like your lifeblood. And then they throw you into this situation where they're like, here are the two hardest fights in the game. And also, you, no mistakes will be tolerated. <laughs> like, right. perfection and, only. And it's like, you haven't really been preparing me for this. And then on top of all of that, and, and this I, I remember too, and this is also too like when I was like unable to get to the point like get to those last levels i was like man even back when like i had my platforming skills honed you know and i haven't like <laughs> wasted all this brain space with like loved ones and you know professional <laughs> information like i remember struggling with to beat the game and i'm not sure i'm not sure if i ever beat it without my trusty game genie you know <laughs> <laughs> but uh but yeah no i remember that and like basically yeah, it's like you said, it's like, it's, you know, so you work hard, you get all the way there. It's like, you have to do this perfectly. Some of it has to be memorized because you have to like learn, you know, like what the you oh, know, yeah. repetition it's, it's, is. It's straight up like Mega Man. It's just straight up pattern recognition. Right. So, and if you screw it up, then you have to start all over again and get through everything. And it was definitely like back in the day where it was, you know, like, oh, well, this was the one game that you had, but that is definitely not difficult it is punishing you know because yes. it's, it's like man i really want to like do this part this part that i failed at i want to try that again but now i have to like do all this other stuff and you have to do well enough because you know you don't want to get there with zero lives left you know so yeah it's uh yeah hard pass on on, on all that <laughs> <laughs> so then i guess that brings me to my final question of although you clearly did not get as much enjoyment out of it as i did <laughs> Do you feel like it at least held up to your memories of it? Uh, I think it was it was in keeping with my memories of it. I would say that it was hmm, it it was definitely like thinking back on it. Yeah, it, it is the way I remember it, and I just I remember enjoying it a lot more when I was younger. <laughs> you know, uh, just because like like also you had like didn't have as many things to compare it to, and you know it was very. It, and I would definitely say it's it's very in keeping with games of the time. You know, so yeah, no, I, I would definitely say it keeps up. It holds up to the way I remember it. But if you need to, you need to actually, I would recommend before you go back and play Sonic Two, sit down and really <laughs> think about the last time you played it, not the emotion associated with it, but the actual like gameplay experience. Because I think that that is accurate. But yeah, no, I was. I if you said to me like, oh well, you know, what do you think? It's like, oh man, I remember loving playing that game, and this last time I played, it, I was like. Oh man, I would just love to rip my eyeballs out. You know? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad. It was enjoyable, but you but, know, there were definitely I mean, some points where I was like, "What? What about you?" So, to someone who's never played it, like, would you say it's unplayable without nostalgia goggles? I would say that their time would be better spent playing many other different <laughs> games. <laughs> All right. So. So yes, I, I wouldn't. I, I would say that it's you know it's worth a play, you know. But if somebody's like, oh yeah, man, I'm thinking about a game I want to kick back and play for the weekend. Like, what, do we, what would you recommend? I'd be like, oh man, you got to check out The Last of Us. You got to check out like all of these great games that have like strong narratives or really interesting mechanics or all this. It's like, what about Sonic and Tails? It's like, yeah, mm, eh. <laughs> did you play yeah. it as a kid? Yeah, yeah, you could you could do that. <laughs> So yeah, I'd say that nostalgia. I don't think it's. I don't think it's like required. Like it's not on your driver's license. You have to wear the nostalgia goggles in order to drive. But I think that you know you you, you should. Like, they help. You know, it's if, like if 2050 vision. Yeah, if you're responsible, you should probably have them on. <laughs> I mean, it, but, obviously, it held up for me, right? So yeah. I'm not nearly as good at it as I used to be, and I remember. I mean, I threw some serious, like, the game is cheating tantrums as a kid. <laughs> but, but there were a couple times where, like, I could feel that emotion welling up in me. And then I was just like, I'm going to go do something else. <laughs> it's just like, because as an adult, like, that's more of an option. I mean, obviously, as a kid, you can do that. But at the time, specifically at the time that we had a Sega in my house, it was hooked up to the TV in the living room. So mm -hmm. it was like... It, there's a game without a save function so it's like to get up and walk away from this is to admit that i'm going to start over the next time i come back 
And then there is, of course, the the constant thing that I have gotten into arguments with Megan about, and I'm sure you've gotten into arguments with Sue about, <laughs> which is then the game has beaten you, and that <laughs> makes it way worse. You know, like I'd much rather waste more of my time, which is really the game beating me. Then, like, have to, like, admit that I have invested by this, you know, thing. So it's like, no, no, I just and, and then you run into the gambling situation where you're like, no, if I can just beat this level, then that'll be good enough. And then, like, you know, you beat the level and you're like, well, that was actually that actually ended kind of fun. Uh, just a little bit more. And then, you know, you're like, no, that, that was how I ultimately was able to get supersonic is because and that was when I was flipping out to Susan about having to memorize where all the bombs were is. It basically became, and I, I didn't say this out loud, but I think what was going on the, in the back of my brain was like, was your 12-year-old self really able to remember something that your 31-year-old <laughs> self can't do? Are you that stupid? <laughs> and it's just like, no, no, that's not what this is. It's not that simple. You're being too reductive. Oh, God, I'm attempting the level again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm picturing the actually, like, that inner monologue. Like, if, that, if they were to shoot that scene, it would just be like you and then, like, your 12-year-old self, like, sitting next <laughs> to you. Like being like, I can't believe, look at what you've become, man. You said you'd never give up on this game, you know? Like, How did you let me turn into you? Oh my God. You know, like like in your, in your nice house with your nice family, it's just kind of like, I cannot believe you let this skill set rust, you know? Like a sword in its scabbard, just, you know, just completely born dull from misuse. Call your boss and tell him you cannot come to work until you have gotten these memorized again. <laughs> So, yeah, overall, um, I think I'm saying that you should have nostalgia goggles and you're saying that eh, not really. I'm, I'm saying. I mean, mine are just so thick. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> I can see through them, but I would I would recommend it to someone who enjoys a classic challenging platformer. And and I because someone who's just like, oh, man, I just want to play like an old school platformer. I'd be like Super Mario World. No question. But it's kind of like uh, someone who says, like, oh, I really loved Mega Man. I would say, play Mega Man X, which we'll probably play eventually. But, like, play Mega Man X because, like, that one was a little bit further along in the chain and it had some things that made it less, like, mind, you know, hair ripping out, like, mind blowingly <laughs> frustrating. Someone who says, like, I want to play an old, hard Nintendo platformer then I would be like, play the original Mega Man because by the yeah. time you're halfway through it, you'll either be like, oh my God, I'm so good at this or, oh my God, I want to kill myself. What was I thinking? And <laughs> and, and Sonic 2 is like, it's in between those things. Like someone yeah. who never played it, I'd be like, if you like challenging platformers, it's fun. If you don't like challenging platformers, probably skip this. Yeah. Yeah. I would definitely say it is challenging and it is punishing at points. Um, but it's not like it, it's it's not Battletoads. I mean, you know, it's no, not, oh God, no. So I'm, yeah, I'm going to no, cheat and and add a, a half star to our rating system and say it is best enjoyed with a nostalgia monocle. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I would oh, agree. Cool. <laughs> um, you got any I know we haven't talked about what we're going to play next. You got any loose thoughts rattling around in there? So um, a, a, a mutual friend of ours recommended that we try um, The Wizard of Oz for the SNES, um, which I, you know, because I was just, I was talking to her and she said like, well, if you want a terrible game, <laughs> here is a terrible game. And I was like, well, it must not be great because I didn't know that the Wizard of Oz had a game associated with it. Dude, Michael and Jackson had a video game. <laughs> oh, I know, right? And I've actually seen some of that and I was just kind of like, that is exactly what I, I mean, like, like, like you don't know which room is going to be yours until you go into it. And then you realize <laughs> it couldn't be any other. Like I saw that game and I was like, yep, that's the only thing that game could have been. But, um, but no, I'd be interested to, uh, to, to give that a shot. It definitely is more, uh, unknown in that I certainly didn't know about it. And, uh, and probably therefore much more representative of the time and also of like shovelware, you know, oh, yes. yeah, I'm pretty no, sure de that definitely like, cash in marketing. Well, yeah, no, I take it back. Cash in marketing, you know, like cash grabs are when the game comes out near the time of the movie. The Wizard of Oz <laughs> came out in what the fifth, thirties, forties. Yeah, I think that uh, it's not like a, a cash grab so much as it was like you know this. This definitely seems like 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 the ET video game for like Atari, where they were just kind of like see, but hey, that man. at least that at least was like at the same time though. You know what this smacks of? This smacks of whoever owned the rights to that movie were like. 
video games seem like they're a thing. What licenses do we have? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. So, anyways, I think that would be an interesting one to to take a swing at. So, yeah, I mean, is it, it it'll be interesting to approach uh, something with um, what I've affectionately started referring to as nostalgia goggles, where like hmm. neither of us have any fond memories of it because we either never played it or we never heard of it. The only thing that sucks about that adorable little term is in writing. It's spelled the same way. <laughs> so maybe a maybe hyphen or something. Like capital N, capital O, or N O dash. Yeah, some, something. We'll figure it out. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. I, I, I trust in your, your abilities. Yeah. yeah. See you in a couple of weeks. The curtain falls. The music plays. The credits roll. Then it all fades to black. And you're left by yourself. The fanfare is gone There's no player two There by your side to share victories won But as you slowly progress Down the hall to your bed A few great events Leak back into your head From the time that you spent Traversing the land Battling evil, fighting the darkness, just sword in hand. Your memories creep in with the edge of a smile. You realize again what you've lost for a while. You're gonna think.